All right, now it's time to talk about Cosmos DB containers, because without containers, we don't have really any compute to run these databases on, and we do talk a bit about containers here. So Azure Cosmos containers are useful for scalability in Azure Cosmos DB, both in terms of storage and throughput. They are beneficial when you need a different set of configurations for each of your Azure Cosmos DBs, uh, because they allow you to customize each container individually. So Azure Cosmos containers have some container specific properties and those properties which can be system generated or user configurable vary according on the used APIs. So the idea is when you first create a database, um, you actually have to create a container with it. So notice here we'll create a new one. And then we have a bunch of options here, which that's what we're gonna be talking about is all these options around containers. So the properties of uh, Cosmos DB containers uh, you know, there are ones that are system defined properties. And depending on which API you use, some properties might not be directly exposed. So uh, the example of those system defined properties are here. So you can see them underscore like underscore rid, underscore e tag, underscore ts, underscore self, the ID. And so notice here that these are all system generated. This is user configurable. And it's going to vary based on uh, these. It looks like it's mostly just SQL API. And then the ID is on all of them there. Um, but, you know, just to read through this quickly, we have unique identifier for the container, the entity tag used for optimistic con uh, concurrency control, the last updated timestamp of, uh, of the container, the addressable UI for the container, the user defined unique name for the container. And there's more than these, but these are the ones that I just picked out to show you here. Uh, but next, let's talk about capacity for containers, okay? 